Does it really take $138 to make a good impact wrench or are you just paying for that name brand? Today we're going to find out when we test a real Makita against a knockoff Makita impact wrench and we're going to see once and for all if you're just paying for brand or if the brand name is worth it. In the first test, we'll measure each impact wrench's maximum tightening and loosening torque. In the second test, we'll see how quickly each impact wrench can remove lug nuts. Then we'll test the ability of both brands to handle a 10-foot fall and also assess the tense moves of both brands. Finally, we'll disassemble both tools and figure out why one tool performs far better than the other. At a price of just under $30, I bought the knockoff brushless impact wrench off of eBay. To keep from getting the impact wrenches confused, let's refer to the knockoff as Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie was shipped directly from China and took about a month to arrive. I have to admit, at first impression, it actually seems to be a lot better tool than I expected for just $30. It's supposed to be able to deliver 520 newton meters, which is about 384 foot-pounds of torque. The Makita is only rated for 210 foot-pounds of maximum torque and 295 pounds of nut busting torque. At a price of $138, which is five times as expensive, the Makita looks very much the same as Cousin Eddie. Both Cousin Eddie and the Makita are made in China. The Makita weighs 1,133 grams. Cousin Eddie weighs just one gram less at 1,132. Wow, that's incredibly close. While the impact wrench housings look the same, the switch plate control pads look quite a bit different. Makita includes three forward and three reverse speeds. Cousin Eddie includes two forward and one reverse speed. One very nice feature on both of these impact wrenches is the reverse rotation auto stop feature. More about that in a minute. The Makita has a rubber roller and pin that makes removal and installation of the battery a little bit easier. The Makita also has three rubber cushions to support the battery. Both the Makita and Cousin Eddie have an LED indicator for the battery level and the tool selection, but the Makita indicator is quite a bit larger and easier to see. The LED light on the Makita is definitely brighter and has a larger broadcast. Regarding the anvils, Cousin Eddie uses a friction ring and the Makita uses a pin detent. There seems to be quite a bit of trigger lag with Cousin Eddie, while the Makita seems to be nearly instantaneous. The trigger lag with Cousin Eddie is pretty noticeable in slow motion, with the Makita completing around four and a half rotations before Cousin Eddie begins spinning. Even though the Makita seems to spin quite a bit faster, it still came to a stop a little bit faster than Cousin Eddie. While loosening it faster, the auto stop feature is a very nice feature as long as the auto stop is quick enough to avoid completely removing the nut. From the time the trigger is squeezed until the time the anvil stops turning, the Makita completed a total of eight rotations. Cousin Eddie completed 10 and a half rotations. Two and a half extra rotations might not matter too often, but in some instances, the extra two and a half rotations will completely decouple the nut from the bolt. Let's check out the RPM of each brand next. Cousin Eddie is supposed to produce 3,000 RPM when not under a load. So let's measure Cousin Eddie's forward and reverse RPM in the soft impact mode first. The forward RPM is 1,800 and very close to 2,300 in reverse. The hard impact setting is also 2,300 forward and 2,300 reverse, which is 700 RPM short of the 3,000 listed on the specification sheet. The Makita has three forward and three reverse speeds. In the low impact forward mode, the Makita was very close to 1500 RPM. In the reverse mode, it was just over 1500. So the Makita was around 100 RPM slower than its rating. The Makita was very close to 2000 RPM in forward and slightly faster than its rating at 2140 RPM in reverse. In the forward high impact mode setting, the Makita was very close to 2750 RPM. In reverse, it achieved just over 3000 RPM, which is actually faster than its rating. Both Cousin Eddie and Makita have variable speed triggers. Cousin Eddie wouldn't spin any slower than 470 RPM. The Makita did quite a bit better at only 45 RPM, so Makita offers quite a bit more control at lower speeds. I went ahead and hooked up a power analyzer in line from the battery to the impact rent so we can measure the no load energy usage of both impacts. The battery is fully charged at 20.2 volts. Testing Cousin Eddie first, 1.73 amps and around 34 watts for both forward and reverse with Cousin Eddie. With the Makita, 2.61 amps and 52 watts in the forward mode. Wow, that's quite a bit more than Cousin Eddie. In reverse, the Makita peaked at 3.4 amps and around 65 watts. Cousin Eddie is supposed to make more torque than the Makita, but it's not looking too promising. Up next, we're going to find out. 
I built the next test rig in order to measure the loosening and tightening torque of both impact tools. It's a pretty simple setup with two 20-ton hydraulic rams sandwiched between two thick pieces of steel. The tester will measure the clamp load. I purchased both right and left hand threaded bolts so we can test both tightening and loosening torque. I'll be using a premium synthetic grease throughout the testing to make sure we're getting consistent and repeatable results. The test will last right at 15 seconds. Prior to testing Cousin Eddie, I went ahead and used a torque wrench to measure the foot-pounds of torque required to achieve 100 PSI in increments from 100 PSI all the way up to 2,000. Testing Cousin Eddie first in the low impact tightening mode. On the test rig, it takes 78 foot-pounds of torque to make 900 PSI of clamping force. Let's see how Cousin Eddie does on the high impact mode. According to specification, Cousin Eddie is supposed to deliver 384 foot-pounds. Wow, I expected a lot more. 1,050 PSI is only 91 foot-pounds, far short of the 384 it's supposed to produce. In low impact mode, the Makita made 650 PSI, which is 57 foot-pounds. In medium impact mode, the Makita made 1,150 PSI and 100 foot-pounds. So the Makita in medium impact setting outperformed Cousin Eddie in the high impact mode. In the high impact mode, the Makita delivered around 178 foot-pounds at 2,050 PSI, which is a little bit short of its 210 foot-pound rating. I went ahead and installed the left-hand threaded bolt and we're all set to begin testing the loosening torque. Cousin Eddie actually did a little bit better this time at 113 foot-pounds at 1,300 PSI. In the reverse mode, the Makita also did much better than Cousin Eddie at 159 foot-pounds at 1,825 PSI. The next test is a speed test between Cousin Eddie and Makita. All of the bolts have been torqued to 100 foot-pounds. The batteries are fully charged and both impact wrenches are in the high impact mode. Let's begin with Cousin Eddie first. Forty nine seconds with Cousin Eddie. Testing the Makita next. Thirty five seconds with Makita. Let's compare in a side-by-side -side contest using slow motion. Both nuts were torqued to 100 foot-pounds. The harder impact of the Makita and the faster trigger response made a huge difference in breaking free the nut and then rapidly removing it. In the next test, we'll compare the auto-stop feature of both impact wrenches. All of the nuts were torqued to 100 foot-pounds, beginning with Cousin Eddie. For a $30 impact tool, the auto-stop feature is very nice and works very well. Okay, about 34 seconds. Testing Makita next. With the Makita, the immediate trigger response is very noticeable after using Cousin Eddie. Okay, about 25 seconds for Makita. Let's check out another side-by-side -side of both impact wrenches. Three out of three times, the Makita finishes the loosening and auto-stop sequence before the nut begins to rotate with Cousin Eddie. Slowing it down a bit, the immediate trigger response was a huge factor in the performance of both brands during the speed test. The purpose of this next test is to demonstrate the ability of both impact wrenches to remove a nut from a bolt with gall threads or one that has been cross-threaded. We'll keep an eye on the green rope to count the total rotations in the 30-second test. The speed as well as the force of each impact wrench will make a huge difference in how quickly it can rotate this engine with the engine brake applied and the spark plug in position creating resistance from compression. Testing Cousin Eddie first. And Cousin Eddie is doing a good job overcoming the engine brake and engine compression. Two and three quarter rotations with Cousin Eddie. The Makita is doing a great job overcoming the engine braking compression. Five and three quarter rotations with Makita. So Makita delivered very close to twice as much work. Up next, let's have an arm wrestling showdown between Cousin Eddie and Makita. Both batteries are fully charged. To make this a fair test, because Cousin Eddie does have a little bit of trigger lag, I went ahead and started Cousin Eddie first. It looks like the Makita is stopping and then overpowering Cousin Eddie. Slowing it down, you can see Cousin Eddie pick up some speed and then come to a sudden stop when the Makita kicks into action.
After several matches, the temperature of the Makita was only about four degrees cooler than Cousin Eddie. I can be a little bit clumsy at times and definitely need tools that can withstand falling to the ground. Using two poles, one as a guide and the other one attached to the tool, both tools should impact the ground oriented very close to the same position. Dropping from 10 feet off the ground onto the concrete, Cousin Eddie made quite a bounce. Other than scratching up the casing a little bit, it doesn't seem to have done any damage. This little piece of rubber came off, but that'll go back into position. Wow, the Makita made quite an impact as well, but not quite as much bounce as Cousin Eddie. Just a few scratches to the Makita after the impact. Up next, we're gonna drop this impact wrench on the front of this anvil and see if it does any damage to the wrench. Between the weight of the battery and the weight of the pipe, unfortunately, the impact wrench casing is broken. I'll have to admit, Cousin Eddie may not work faster than Makita, but it definitely has some great dance moves for a $30 tool. The impact wrench looks fine and is still working, but as you can see, there's definitely a broken handle on this impact wrench. Let's check out the Makita. Wow, just like Cousin Eddie, the Makita took a hard blow to the anvil, and look at the handle flexing near the battery. Turns out the Makita has some dance moves as well. I'm really curious regarding which brand has the better dance moves. Time for a dance off. There's definitely no trigger delay with Cousin Eddie on the dance floor. Makita has some good moves too, but definitely needs to loosen up a little. I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible here, but I do believe that Cousin Eddie definitely gets the win for the best dance moves. Very impressive moves for sure. Let's disassemble the impact wrenches next to compare internal components and construction. You can see where the case handle broke. Cousin Eddie definitely has a brushless motor. Even though both tools look a lot alike, the brushless motors, build materials, and electronics are very different. Wow, the plastic case on the Makita is much more robust than Cousin Eddie, so it's no surprise that Cousin Eddie snapped at the base. Cousin Eddie's hammer weighs 253 grams. The Makita hammer weighs 297. So the Makita hammer is quite a bit heavier. The anvil on Cousin Eddie is definitely showing a lot more wear than the Makita. You can see quite a bit of rounding on this edge compared to the original edge. And if you look at the Makita, there's just a very small amount of wear. The Makita makes more RPM and uses a much heavier hammer, explaining why it performs much better than Cousin Eddie on everything except for dance moves. So is a $30 impact wrench or the cheap knockoff as good as the Makita? Absolutely not. Pretty obvious that Makita dominated the showdown, but I think a better question is, is the knockoff worth $30? In my opinion, it's a very good value for $30, and it's very hard to find a brushless motor, a brushless tool for that type of price. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.